Either of you, anybody here has uh, parents who are Israeli? My mother's Israeli. My father's Israeli. Both my parents are Israeli. <laughs> uh -huh. So, naturally, you must have enlisted because your parents forced you to, right? No, that wasn't the case. Wasn't the case? No. How about you? No, my mom didn't even believe me. When I told her I want to list, she's like, okay, okay, yeah. And then when a day actually came, she's like, I can't believe you're actually doing this. So, yeah. How about you? My parents were surprised, but they were still supportive. Why were they surprised? Because I was born and raised here, and this is a place that everybody dreams to live. And how could you leave your friends, your family, your house, your comfort, your plans for college, everything that was ingrained in you for 18 years, and to leave and go to a place where you might not have friends, you might not have family, you might not speak the language, you might not be familiar with the culture. To do the most difficult thing in the world is to join the Israeli Defense Forces. It's not an easy thing, and it's not expected from everyone to do so. So what motivated you? My love for Israel, um, to prevent another Holocaust, to do what I can to um, ensure a safe place for one, me to Bezrat Hashem live in, and also for my kids to be able to go and serve and to visit, and my family to live in safely. And there's millions of reasons I could sit with you for hours. What inspired you? Um, honestly, I kind of grew up here mostly with American friends and then in high school I started joining the, I joined the Tzofim, which is the Israeli Scouts. I did a lot of community service that is relevant to Israel and, you know, the cause and Zionism and all that stuff and it really just inspired me to kind of give more from myself and to see what I could do and not just kind of sit back and wait for others and take that step myself. What inspired you? Similar to Danielle, I was also in Tzofim. Um, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, similar to Daniela, I was also in Tufim, and um, both of my parents are Israeli, so I always grew up with the culture and the food and the language and everything, and every few years we'd visit Israel, and since I was a little kid, I always had a love for Israel. So I told myself I want to go there and join the army and give back, and that's all. What do women do in the Israeli army? You don't, you guys don't fight, do you? There's women that fight. I wasn't a, a fighter, but there are women that fight. What did you do? I was a social welfare non-commissioned officer. You mean helping, helping the soldiers? Yes. The lady, the girl soldiers? Boys and girls. What did you do? I was also a social worker. I was in a little bit of a different unit than her. I did uh, people who were in basic training, uh, so just kind of to get them used to the army and kind of the lifestyle and make sure that everything was okay at home so they were able to serve, you know, a full fulfillment of a service. Yeah. Uh, I was served in the paratroopers brigade. Uh, how, come, how come you're wearing uh, sandals, thongs? Your, your feet look okay? My feet? look okay now, but if we go back in time, uh, I, I had to wear uh, my feet. <laughs> <my fee. laughs> I'm not going to get detailed, but it wasn't pretty. Paratroopers, did you jump out of airplanes? Yeah, I jumped seven times. And you were trained to land, I guess, beyond enemy lines? Well, yeah, specifically my unit uh, specializes in operating deep within enemy territory. But, and that's why we're certified to jump from airplanes, but uh, the paratroopers don't necessarily, no, no army in the world is going to parachute anymore in war because it's not really efficient, but it's more so to keep the culture of the unit going. Uh -huh. uh, what do your families think of you having gone and done this? Because obviously they, it looks like that they're members of uh, a support group and what's your connection now with the Families Alone Soldiers? Well, um, my parents are very supportive of me going. Um, like I said, they're both Israeli, so we're, we were always just raised with those Israeli roots. Um, and now that I'm released, I try as much as I can to be a part of Families of Lone Soldiers. I know they helped out my parents when I was there. Events my parents would go to and just to talk to other parents whose kids are also in the army. But the, the kids are out now. Why would you? Why would your parents still be a part of an association uh, when after the kids are already out of the? Do they still need the support of others? Well, I think it's mostly also to go. 
when I first drafted, I was in the same green as uh, the founder's daughter, and I think that he really just wanted a place where everybody could feel safe and for the generations to come and to kind of be able to comfort other families. So I think that the most important thing is that people who have already done it, they're able to support the people who are going through it, and it's something that's very special and a connection that's very appreciated. And what does this association provide for you and your family? Provides comfort, it provides a community, it provides an extension of family. That's why it's called the Families of Lone Soldiers, because it, everyone is a family. But you're out now. Why would they, why would they I mean, you, couldn't you put it behind you? Because not everybody, like my mother, had five brothers that went and joined the army and they're in the uh, combat. Not everybody has that. And so everybody can benefit and feel like they do have some safe haven and someone to turn to and to answer questions and to make them feel more comfortable with their kid being on the other side of the world and serving in the Israeli Defense Forces. It, that's why, that's why it's here. Because even the parents in Israel that are in the same country as their kids serving are still worried. So you can only imagine what the parents here feel. So there are college campuses around the country, and you, you guys look like you're around college age, just post-college age. There are college campuses where people will think that, oh my gosh, the IDF. Uh, what do you want to say to your contemporaries who have not had the exposure, the experience, to know about how the IDF uh, functions and, and the need for uh, a strong Israel? Anybody? Uh, I would just encourage them to ask questions, to really go see Israel for themselves and to not um, trust, I would say, anybody, whether it be the news or a person, because everybody has their own bias, and I think Israel can speak for itself. Well, but not everybody's going to go and invest $2,000 in a trip to Israel. What can you say from, from your experience to uh, uh, assure them of uh, the goodness or uh, justice of your cause? Um, I've risked my life many times because of the morality that drives the Israeli Defense Forces and I'm 100% sure they still have the same rules and morals today and again to just ask questions and do research you can find everything online and well, if, if you go online you can find lots of haters yeah but you need to. yeah I think that it's all written in the history and I think that if people take the time to educate themselves about the history of Israel the history of the Jews I think that it's all written there very very clearly and whatever other opinions people have it's less relevant than what's actually written down in the history books and a lot of it is just educating yourself and being tolerant of others and not being completely brainwashed by the media and what they're showing because it's not the full picture. Oh, but isn't there any favorable media about uh, the, uh, the, 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 the struggle Israel's up against? Um, I believe there are. I can name a few. I think Fox News mostly, above others, would probably more, be more supportive of Israel. Um, but a lot of it is bias and it's kind of like supporting the underdog, uh, which is why they always try to create this false image of what Israel is. and this values that they have. Is Israel a militaristic society? No, I don't think so. It's, it's I mean, definitely part of the culture. Yeah. It's definitely part of the culture. I would say it influences the culture and the people more than it influences it. No one's walking around looking over their shoulder. Everybody lives and everybody's happy and it's something that everybody goes through and I think if you go to Israel and you do meet people or if you meet Israelis that have moved from Israel to here, you'll see there's a type of uh, maturity or or there's this little spice to them and I would say a part of that spice is added from serving in the army. Uh, what does, uh, what does the, the safety of, uh, of Israel, what does it mean for the rest of the world? Why should people care? I don't think, I think it's kind of just putting yourself in the shoes of others. I would never want any other person to feel unsafe in where they live and I think that Israel doesn't really have the luxury of, you know, not having an army or not being able to defend itself because all of the neighbors, unfortunately, around it are, you know, against it and against the cause and, you know, deny the right to exist. So, I mean, I think that 
a normal person would think, you know, nobody should live like that. And obviously, if they are living like that, then they should have the right to support themselves. Well, many people would think that if Israel were to fall and then the Muslims would take over, the uh, jihad would take over, they would rule Jerusalem, then all this terrorism would stop, wouldn't it? Um, the terrorism isn't aimed at just Judaism. It's aimed at anything that isn't it. So it's an ideology and a border and an ocean isn't going to stop it and we're just... But wouldn't a Palestinian state stop all the terrorism? No, and if someone has an extra five to ten minutes on their hands they can go on Google and look up the several times that land or... and among other things were given to the Palestinians and nothing came out of it. If anything, just war came out of it. Um, so... Like I said, do the research and understand that Israel is just in the forefront and once the forefront's down, they go to the back line and once the back line's down, they go into the headquarter, whether that be the UK or the United States of America. You're saying that there's a connection between Israel's safety and what happens in the West? Of course. We're, we're an extension of the West and I think physically we're just closest to um, the terrorism and where it roots from, and after it passes us, it's gonna to spread to anything else, like a virus.